Santa Claus Go straight to the ghetto Fill every stocking you find <laughs> What's up, you guys? It's Adana. I am back with another video for you guys. Today's going to be about studying, my study tips, or how I study for PA school. Um, I've gotten that question quite a bit lately uh, in talking to some pre-PAs, and um, it's something that I had a question about when I was first starting because I was like, man, it is so much information. How am I going to retain all of this information? And it was kind of a learning curve, you guys. Like it was something I really had to get used to and I had to figure out because I was not sure how I would retain all of the information that I was expected to retain that I knew that I needed to retain because had I have not retained it, that could be somebody's life further down the line, you know? So it was definitely like nerve wracking and and def definitely like I, I don't know like I was I was pretty like scared on entering PA school and then studying because I knew that in undergrad I really didn't like I didn't really have to study you know there are some things that you kind of studied for but you a lot of my time wasn't just spent studying um, but pretty much every minute of my day is spent studying in PA school um, so that's one thing planning out my day and making sure that the time that I'm utilizing is important um, with respect to how I study I know some of you have seen my study with me videos um, where I just kind of do block studying for certain things I'm literally just kind of going over like really really big ticket buzzwords and you know some presentations and trying to make sure that I understand exactly like what goes with what Wh why does this disease process go this way as opposed to allowing the body to do this so it's very very important to find what works for you um, definitely what worked for me in undergrad does not work for me now and um, they they always say like PA school is like that it's that meme you know where it's like you're trying to drink through a fire hydrant I don't know if you've seen it but it's like you know somebody is sitting up there and then there's like a fire hydrant just pouring water into their mouth and that's kind of how it is with respect to the uh, information that you're getting you're getting a lot of information it's super dense um, you really have to remember pretty much everything but you can pick and choose and that's that's the smart part I know that in my early on in my medical terminology class uh, that is the class where you learn what the disease is how to treat it um, what the presenting symptoms are the, all of those you know basic medicine stuff I did not really do that too well on my first exam I think I got like a low B or a B minus and as I've told you guys before if you get below a 73 um, that is failing in my school and I may have gotten like an 80 or something I don't know but it was not um, as high as I would have expected it to be and I was like what's going on you know how am I like not doing as well like I know I studied hard for this and it's not always about studying hard um, it's about studying smart so uh, after I talked around some people spoke to my upperclassman mentor you know I got some tips I looked I bought pants uh, I will show you guys that book I bought pants prep pearls uh, which helped me out a lot just consolidating the information helping me to realize exactly what I was looking for in the vignettes and then and um, I also like made study guides and others made study guides that I used to study for. Um, one really, really cool thing about uh, my class, my cohort, is that they're super helpful. So uh, we have like a class of 2019 uh, Google Drive and we just they just put everything in there. So all the study guides that they've made for themselves, they put it in there and they share it with everyone. So if you may do better with, you know, Jane's study guide then you use Jane's study guide as opposed to using Martha's you know so it's like it's really cool because you get to pick and choose it's like going shopping and figuring out what works for you and after after making study guides and looking through pants and doing that making little stupid mnemonics um, it worked it helped me out so that is definitely something 
try to figure it out, figure out what works for you um, and how you will study best. And don't be ashamed to like ask questions on like, well, how did you study for this? I will show you guys exactly what I'm talking about with respect to my study guides and um, pants, how pants breaks it down, because it's definitely a benefit to have. So if you are a pre-PA student, if you have gotten into PA school and you haven't gotten pants prep pearls yet, go ahead and get that book because it is definitely a lifesaver in PA school. Um, with respect to pharmacology, I think I did worse than I did um, in my medical practice cl class on that first test. And I went to the teacher, I was like, um, I don't know what's going on. Like, this is not me. I'm not this kind of student. So I don't understand why I'm not getting like these drugs and I don't understand why I can't figure out like the questions. I don't know if it's just me not understanding the way that you're asking the questions or I just don't know the drugs at all, but I know that I studied. And he told me, you know, he's like, I, I had a problem with this when I was in my doctoral program. I had a lot of drugs that I needed to know. And so what I did was I broke it down and I put them in bubble maps. And um, I put in the adverse effects. I said, this is where, um, these are the uses, this is the mechanism of action. Because these are all things that you need to know because different drugs interact with each other. Um, you're never supposed to use certain drugs together. You may, you, you know, you may cause someone's death if you do an overdose on this. If there is an overdose, how do you revert it back? Um, how do you counteract that? So those are all things that you need to know. And in my bubble map, I may take like 80 slides and break it down into two bubble maps. Um, on, you know, on my PowerPoint because I make the maps on PowerPoint. So that has worked really well for me. I've done so much better in farm um, than I did the summer before. And I only expect to do even better in medical microbiology because that's kind of what it changes to in the, um, the third semester. That's when we learn about all of our, um, what are they? Oh, all of our antibiotics. So we're gonna learn about all of our um, antibiotics in medical microbiology. And I only expect to do better in that class. So I definitely make bubble maps. I draw it out. I spend, I may have a template already ready. And then as we're going through the slides, I add in the information and that works tremendously for me. With respect to my anatomy class, I literally just down arrow every slide. Um, it's not a lot of slides. It's any, I think the max amount of slides that we've had in that class is like 36, but it's a lot of information. And so what I have to do is just down arrow, down arrow, down arrow, continue to go back to the beginning, down arrow, down arrow, down arrow. And then I use, um, there's a book, an atlas that I use uh, for the lab and then for the class as well to, to know the origin, insertion, the nerve innovation and the action. Those are all things that you need to know with respect to the muscle and um, in my anatomy class. So definitely that book helps me out a lot. It has a lot of charts um, that I can actually use which is beneficial when I am studying because sometimes charts work for me even though I hate Excel um, sometimes just seeing it in a consolidated chart um, works for me uh, with respect to my anatomy class so I use that um, and again you know our classmates put up their study guides they put up their Excel spreadsheets we print out the different pictures uh, and then we also have to do radiology and anatomy and that again is just more repetitive Petition, looking at what it may look like, knowing the uh, the actual orientation of the different muscles and how to read um, the film or you know the CT scan, knowing exactly what side you're on so that you're picking the right structures when you're doing the test. So um, that's usually how I study with respect to my anatomy class. And then every other class is just kind of like how you're, you're generally studying, you know, just kind of going through um, reading the slides because everything is pretty much online. Although we have books, everything is pretty much over the computer. I'm looking at slides constantly. Um, and I, I only look at 
paper really and truly when I print out my study guides to study for the exam. But that is it. I mean, I spend a lot of time studying, maybe four to five hours a day or a night, you know, after I've come home. I try to be in bed by no later than 11 just because I need that time to function. <laughs> so, but I break up my day and I break up my study time and that's really what works for me. And that's what's been working for me, especially this semester, because this was a difficult semester. It was so dense, so much material. Um, I thought the summer was hard. Well, this semester was a beast. Um, and I'm just looking forward to next semester to see how things roll with that, uh, see how I do there, and prepare for clinical! because I will be in clinicals in about five months. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, if you guys have any other questions on studying, um, study tips, maybe even like, I don't know, like I really like cool, colorful pens and um, pencils and stuff. So um, maybe you guys have some tips for me on where I can find some really cool, colorful pens. That would be nice. Leave that in the comment section below. And if you have any comments or questions on my studying um, that I didn't, my study tips that I didn't necessarily touch on or questions that you would want answered, leave that in the comment section below as well. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA, and I will see you guys next time.